you mentioned uh, checkerboard cichlids earlier. Um, they are definitely one that's fascinated me recently. Um, I'm sorry, Helen, that it didn't work out with us with, when it comes to them. Uh, what can you tell us about them and their behaviours? And if I was hypothetically wanting to set up a bit of a biotope style aquarium for a group, what would I do? Um, so, I mean, each, I've only got personal experience with Decrosis filamentosus, which is yep. a much more common one. Eventually, yep. on my list, I would love to breed all of the different species of checkerboards. Very hard to get hold of most of them. Um, and equally hard to sometimes keep alive. Uh, mm. Lots of people have issues with, with that kind of thing. Um, but I know that there's a yeah people don't realize quite how much they necessarily interact with their environment foraging wise so like i mentioned earlier checkerboards will just pick up leaves move them out of the way flip them over see what's on the underside of it if there's any food that kind of thing um and filamentosis uh i think it was gerald buswell was telling me that they do generally spawn on slightly curled leaves um so lots of leaf litter um for example for them would be good mine once spawned in a in a little tiny uh ceramic tube um but i believe that's because at the time i didn't have any leaves in the tank so that was just the most suitable unnatural alternative that they could mm. find that fulfilled that kind of rough shape that they needed and they went for it um i've also had a bit of an issue with my checkerboards recently in that i keep ending up with males so i've bought many a pair over the years well over the past couple of years and keep ending up with males um and the most recent of which was what I thought, I thought I had two males, one female left. Turns out that female was posing, was actually just a male posing as a female for over a year and a half before it showed wow. any male trait whatsoever. Wow. And it does seem to be that the only kind of guaranteed way is if when you see them at the shop the, the curious thing about filamentosis i not can't remember whether this is with all of the checkerboards but with filamentosis definitely once a female has spawned her pelvic fins go red is it pelvic i think it's pelvic her pelvic fins go or orangey red and stay that color forever Mm. But only once they've spawned. So oh. I thought this was just a female because I got it quite when it was quite young. I thought it was just a female that had never spawned. But no, it was a sleeper male the entire time. Um, which, given that, that it, it grew up around like three other males, that's kind of understandable. But the other one that was a sleeper male um, did it showed itself as a male after like two months so this one to stay for over a year and a half before because it's it, it stayed smaller in size it's everything and then suddenly when i was kind of moved back to uni um in in um uh, in september and i was i've kind of had to move it between a couple of tanks I moved it and then put it in the tank and it had been quite a dark tank so i hadn't seen it much and then suddenly there was a slight lyra tail um but so yeah he's, he's that little male has just blown my mind that so so for the people watching when you ask your fish shop if they can get you a male and a female my response is generally i will try my hardest but i can't guarantee it that is exactly why 
you, you yeah. can have absolutely educated guesses and go, I think I'm 99% sure, but unless you've seen spawns, had confirmed spawns, it is just often a, mm. we should be right, but not 100% sure side of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, especially with something like that, I'd almost be inclined to, next time I get them, I'd almost be inclined to just ask for females. Some of them will end yeah. up being males. Yeah. Especially if they're quite young. Um, gives you a better shot. Yeah. So if you were to, oh sorry, if you were to keep to try and mimic a bio as much as possible, what other other fish would you be wanting to keep with them? What sort of setup would you run with them? Uh, how would you uh, sort of make the ecosystem work? That would well depend on well the the type of checkerboard and whether and kind of what the focus is. So yeah. if this is to breed checkerboards then it would be very different as to if i was putting them in as part of the wider community mm -hmm. i say wider community still biotope style because there's some i believe it was even mccology in uh his orinoco book there are some brilliant accounts of kind of some uh, not symbiotic it's there's another word for when it realistically only benefits one of them um yeah yeah but i don't even i can't remember the word either. um and so some of these larger sand sifting cichlids like geophag not geophagus um well they will be it but satana perca demon were the mm. specifically mentioned um they will have um, a couple of different species following them around, basically, because when they pick up a mouthful of substrate, filter it through their gills, they have a couple of different species following them around, picking up then, A, the stuff that they've uncovered, because they're smaller and they can fit into those little gaps within the leaves or twigs or whatever, um, and B, the actual stuff that's been filtered through the gills, they'll then go at that as well and sift through it. So I'd be basically following these slightly larger Satana Perkers around. Um, and I think, off the top of my head, I think Filamentosus was one of those species. Um, and there was another one, I think it was like Microsema Brycon, Cassiclare or something like that. Basically, this tiny little kind of um, tetra same kind of color as my arm um with i think he nicknamed it the cory tetra because it was swimming uh, essentially like a cory basically mistaking it for a baby cory at that point because they were following these around swimming on a slight angle like cory's would sniffling at the substrate hmm. following satana burkas around um and that kind of thing you're never going to see it in the hobby because no. collectors are going to look at that and go oh people are going to want them because collectors seem to think people only care about color well to be fair most aquarists do seem to only care about color um yeah. not as many look at the little nitty gritty behaviors but like, I, I would love to set up a tank with with that kind of thing to see if they do kind of just follow them around although in an aquarium setting i'd be a bit concerned about larger satana perkers having a go at eating um smaller uh like female checkerboards or if i could get hold of any of those little corn tetras um but if it was more just for checkerboards well i'd a look at what species are found sympatrically with them so which species are found in the same river systems with them and they either go with the exact species or if there is another species in the same genus that will realistically have quite similar behavior um then that fish is more likely to know what to do to kind of interact with that with their 
the natural tank mates, so to speak, um, wild mates, whatever. Um, and so something like a Nanostomus might be perfect or one of the smaller hatchet finished machines because they're not going to compete. They shouldn't cause each other issue when breeding and with a smaller hatchet or smaller actually i'm going to change that to a smaller and peaceful pencil because some of the pencils are surprisingly aggressive um i.e the male color red i've got in there will happily chase some of the hatchets and whatnot um and yeah so one of the more peaceful pencils possibly one of the more peaceful hatchets something like a i think dream trio for me would probably be well big group of, of conigella strigata marbled hatchets um big group of nanostomus equus diptail pencils and then a big group of well i say a big group i'm going to say a medium-sized group like maybe six between five and seven or so maybe a little bit more of the checkerboards because weirdly compared to other kind of dwarf cichlids they do seem to quite like being in a kind of more of a group and you see more of a hierarchy being developed than you would in something like an epistogram where it's that's a male that's a male we're going to beat the crap out of each other mm -hmm. these guys they generally do develop more of a hierarchy and it's quite a lot more interesting to observe um kind of the little bickerings between them um i mean they do then seem to be absolutely fine with um little loricarids and stuff so like the fish that i'd chosen i mean it went off course but the fish that i originally chose for that tank was going to be a rio negro slash rio Domini tank based around the l107 ancestress and then trying to build a community around that that's kind of biotope correct and functions well which is why i did start with granted plans changed over the years but i started with the group of l107 ancestors a group of checkerboard cichlids filamentosus a group of conigella strigata the marble hatchets and big group of nanostomus um equus now it did get thrown out of balance a bit when i got some capella naturalize which is the spotted splash tetra not quite the same as so same genus as capella arnoldi which are the famous ones for jumping out spawning out of water flopping back in um these are more of an intermediate species they spawn on leaves that are just submerged now whether that's a dead leaf that's started to sink but hasn't fully sunk or whether it's a water lily leaf that's slightly underneath the water they'll kind of shimmy on top of that leaf spawn the male will claim a leaf and then he'll kind of coerce a female to get onto that leaf and he'll yeah they'll lay, lay the eggs being protected from all of the fish below by having them on top of these kind of uh, slightly submerged leaves um turns out they are weirdly aggressive for carisons <laughs> little tiny carisons <coughs> sorry um and when when a male has claimed his his leaf or because i had either my my water lily substitute was a red tiger lotus yes it's west african but it still fulfills the same niche um i had them spawning on top of these uh lily leaves um it's amazing to watch but anytime they do that anytime the male would claim a territory it just start kind of nipping the fins of the checkerboard cichlids beating the crap out of little marbled hatchets and the the really slow moving peaceful equi equus pencils so there's a lot to learn from that but equally there's bugger all information about Natura or I and their behavioural habits online. So mm -hmm. it was only really from first time experience that I had to learn that. Um, that and the whole 
deal with um, the Capella group is half the time they get imported as Splash Tetra, and it's look at the draw, what you get. And then most people can't figure out what's what, even though there's quite a helpful key from about 2017. Um, but loads of the old names get used, like Capella. These were imported as Capella Mindkini, which was right until about 2017. And then it became a junior synonym of Capella Natarai. And most of what people think of Capella Natarai are actually another Capella. And it's all really confusing. Um, but yeah, these, these Capella Natarai even then ended up, so whilst they were from the right region, were biotech correct. That doesn't mean that they work. Um, so these would, I, I like that I've got some beautiful little uh, rhino acarias, the I, uh, the Chicaria kangas, the little wood grain whiptails, and these would be like trying to peck at their eyes and stuff, and or like peck at the the filaments on the fins. Like I had no idea these capella. I mean, as stunning as these capellas are, and as cool as the behaviours are that they're they're exhibiting, they just didn't seem to be good. Kind of, even though I thought they would be really good. A really good fit for that kind of tank that I designed because with it being a partially filled tank as well so that I can see water levels from the top that kind of thing so I can see the marble hatchets from the top it's yeah it just didn't end up working um, and they ended up whittling down the numbers of hatchets and pencils and stuff so I had to, I had to take them out uh, put them in a different tank. Yeah. So, 